My name is uh, Shandor Sabo. Uh, I am a Hungarian minority who grew up in former Yugoslavia, where I got my medical degree, then moved to Canada to get my PhD in um, endocrine uh, pharmacology and toxicology, and moved over to Harvard Medical School when I was trained as a pathologist and expert in public health. Currently, uh, I'm the founding dean of the School of Medicine at the American University of Health Sciences, AUHS, here in, on the Signal Hill in Long Beach near Los Angeles. And uh, we are very pleased uh, to provide information uh, not only on, on COVID-19, but especially long COVID. Long COVID is a relatively new name in, in medical practice and medical literature. It, as the name indicates, um, coronavirus-induced disease was just discovered and introduced um, to the world at the end of 2019. And at that time, it appeared to be a short duration of uh, disease re related mostly to lung functions, difficulties in breathing. but as uh, the number of cases multiplied, we realized that some patients will never get completely well, never get cured. Especially at that time, there was no vaccine and no drugs, and some patients uh, remained sick or not well uh, for several days and several weeks. So uh, within a few months, uh, in 2020, essentially a new syndrome appeared to be uh, becoming a world known, uh, well known and, and worldwide known problem. And this was named initial, but long hauler uh, syndrome, uh, chronic uh, uh, COVID, as opposed to the acute, the short duration of COVID. But the most uh, prevalent um, name and most of the people prefer, and we personally want to call it long COVID syndrome. The importance here is on the, also on the world syn syndrome because not a single single disease and as we will see later on, it involves multiple organs. So it is not as simple as have a, a flu or, um, or pneumonia, inflammation of the lung or um, uh, gastrointestinal stomach diseases. This long COVID involves the lungs, the brain, the muscles and many other diseases and is defined now that anybody who either get acute COVID, cured, get well, but the, some of these symptoms like fatigue, uh, difficulties in breathing, uh, uh, brain fog, difficulties in memories come back four to six weeks after the disease. Furthermore, a new literature indicates that essentially some people will just never get completely cured out, even if they are vaccinated, that the disease will persist and this, this is one of the reasons that we prefer to call this a long COVID syndrome, not just long COVID disease. Whenever a new disease appears, of course the first thing we, we should know uh, what causes it, how it appears. And unfortunately the bad news is that medical science doesn't know that yet. Uh, uh, we know that obviously the initial trigger is the, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 vi uh, virus, but how did it manifest in some people? Uh, and it involves about, the long COVID involves about 30% of the uh, previously sick uh, COVID patients. But um, uh, the new data as of last week actually revealed a very surprising uh, prevalence that uh, this long COVID is uh, affects about 2% of the entire UK population. So 2% of the entire population of England suffers from this long COVID. And the uh, uh, causes are, again, not well clarified. The most likely is probably some immune uh, overreaction in our body that the virus might not be completely cured. And others, other studies show that viral particles present in several cells, in, in, or several organs. So something is remaining in, in the body of people who got infected. And uh, this uh, 
probably causes an ongoing immune reaction and uh, the, a, a disease persists. So the short answer is unfortunately the, uh, the, the complete cause is unknown, uh, but there are a lot of studies going on worldwide including some collaboration that was initiated here at American University of Health Sciences, involves 10 countries around the world, uh, two of them from Asia, one actually from Vietnam and from Bangladesh. When we are trying to understand uh, not only the, the frequency of the disease, but also what causes and what might be a best treatment. Okay, so the next uh, obvious question is uh, what is the best treatment or is there any treatment for long COVID? As it turns out, um, for complex diseases uh, such as long COVID, there is no definite treatment. Uh, the further bad news is that even vaccination does not protect completely against long COVID. Namely, people who got vaccinated uh, about 20% of those people come down with long COVID. And this is again the new data from the United Kingdom of last week. 20% of the vaccinated people. So that implies that um, uh, people who got COVID maybe was, were asymptomatic, but still could come down with sudden appearance of fatigue, uh, shortness of breath, uh, brain fog, uh, mental problems, sometimes heart problems, are appearing suddenly in the seemingly healthy people who were vaccinated. And there is no treatment because if the vaccination doesn't help, there is no specific drug either. Now in the United States, two drugs have been introduced, one by Merck and the other is by Pfizer, Laplaxovid, and that treats the acute uh, the illness of long COVID but has not been uh, evaluated yet in long COVID treatment. And probably because long COVID is a very complex disease, probably again partially over, due to our overreaction, so there is not a single treatment, unfortunately. What is appearing, and that uh, actually was published in a nice article with a cover story of the new scientist, one of the oldest scientific uh, weeklies in the world, published in the UK, beating long COVID. And the only recommended therapy was essentially hyperbaric, hyperbaric oxygen, oxygen under high pressure. Since the main manifestation of long COVID is lung, lung related, breathing related, breathing the oxygen under high pressure improves the symptoms temporarily. The other um, possible uh, treatments are involving some immune modulators, glucocorticoids such as dexamethasone, but none of them is essentially treating the disease as a cause, but mostly as a sy symptoms. So uh, there is no uh, good treatment. Prevention vaccination helps in most of the people, but the minority of that still gets long COVID. And those who get severely ill, especially if it is related to uh, related to breathing problem, uh, they should be referred to hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Okay, so also after a short overview of long COVID, the question remains, uh, what are the long-term consequences? What are the main organs um, involved? As the symptoms indicate, um, again, difficulties of breathing, fatigue, uh, memory uh, problems, almost any organs can be involved. But the top candidate uh, are the lungs, the brain, and some of the muscles. Unfortunately, including even the heart muscle, which is a specialized muscle, but some of these patients come down with myocarditis or epicarditis, inflammation of the heart muscle that can be easily diagnosed and most of the, the heart problems disappear. But the most persistent signs and symptoms involve the lung and the brain. Some uh, brain imaging um, studies suggested that it, is, uh, uh, that it causes alteration in the brain. Some areas of the brain essentially show measurable changes, especially the gray matter. And uh, the, the, the mechanism of this is purely unknown, 
and we do not know how to how to how to uh, how to prevent it. The good news among this all this is that this is very debilitating disease, very difficult to deal with it, but it's not life threatening. People don't die usually of long COVID. It's a very annoying disease, um, especially when you see people, patients, that you cannot help them directly. But essentially, the good news is that uh, so far, it's a relatively mild, annoying syndrome, but not life-threatening. So the next question, how to avoid um, uh, long COVID, especially if we catch virus uh, several times? There is no way to avoid, unfortunately, because it's totally unpredictable. Uh, again, as the initial studies and, uh, last year indicated, about 30% of the COVID-infected patients come down with um, uh, long COVID sy syndromes, signs and uh, symptoms, but essentially no way to predict who will get it. And um, there are no data whether multiple uh, exposure to virus will increase or decrease the chance of long COVID. So essentially more data are needed. That's the reason again that um, we emphasize the need for more public health and medical related research. Uh, some of these essentially sponsored and initiated here from AUHS. So one of the other remaining last question is that um, are there any drugs, vitamins, that might prevent uh, or minimize these signs and symptoms of long COVID? Unfortunately, there are no strict uh, recommendations, but we, know a few, we have a few clues. Uh, we know that in general, antioxidant vitamins, uh, vitamins which prevent uh, uh, organ damage due to free radical uh, stress reactions in, at the cellular level, such as vitamin C, vitamin E, are, 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 are effective almost in any disease, even if you don't know the cause and the mechanism of the disease. Other potent uh, antioxidants are, are the, the selenium, and selenium especially is important because there are data, especially with the acute uh, COVID, that people whose diet is deficient in selenium, uh, they more likely have a insufficient uh, immune response to any disease, including um, uh, COVID-19 uh, disease and manifestation of the long COVID uh, uh, syndrome. So definitely we recommend taking not only general good vitamins, but uh, especially selenium, thiamine uh, also, and zinc. Zinc is critically important again for the uh, immune system, our cells that generate antibodies against uh, uh, viruses. So we recommend essentially in addition to the potent antioxidants, at least uh, zinc, selenium uh, and thiamine uh, deficiency. No guarantee that it prevents, but uh, as we know from other diseases, these vitamins and nu nutritional supplements usually have beneficial effect. I hope this short overview was helpful to most of you. Unfortunately, not containing too many specific uh, good news, but essentially that's an objective state of our knowledge. So definitely uh, the bad news is that there are a lot of unknown mechanism and lack of specific treatment. The good news is a lot of investigations going on at several countries in the world. Uh, both at the basic science level, but especially at clinical medicine and at the public health level.